this is the uh, the skull, a replica of Megalosaurus, which is uh, commonly called the Irish elk. Um, what we're going to do is we got it shipped to us straight out of the mold. So that means it's not prepped. There is excess resin and fiberglass that needs to be removed. So basically the steps are we cut all that away and then we fill any gaps with uh, uh, minimal expansion foam. Uh, that foam that expands a lot, one of the problems is it will literally split these pieces in half or, or uh, deform them by uh, expanding within the piece. So we use a minimal expansion foam to give it a little bit more heft, to give it a little bit more body. And then finally we'll coat it with a product that is sort of a, uh, uh, think of it as, as a, a heavy, thick, almost a plastic-like covering over the piece. It can be painted and it can be stained, and so we'll do all that. So anyway, um, I'm gonna begin work on this thing as soon as I can, and I'll uh, uh, hope you guys enjoy this video of how it's put together. The final stage after prep is going to be to have a stand made for it. When I had it made, I had it poured in two pieces because this will go in my traveling museum, and I have limited space in that trailer. So. This thing is enormous. These horns are each about seven feet across. So when he's put together, he's he's nearly 14 feet wide. So that is a that's a big animal. Anyway, hope you enjoy it.
this is basically two parts that have been joined. So it's uh, made of fiberglass and resin. So the piece is relatively lightweight, which is good, but I've got to add a little bit of stability to it because we plan on traveling with this, which means we're gonna have to move it around quite a bit. So what I've got is, I've got some minimal expansion foam. And the reason why it's important that you use the minimal expansion foam is because if it expands too much, it will literally split this piece apart or cause it to, to bulge and bend. So, um, so that's what I'm going to do now is try to fill the interior. And then of course, it's going to ooze out of any place where there's a crack. I'll give you an idea of kind of what I'm talking about. There's sections on here that are split um, or cracked. And so it's going to ooze out of there, but we'll file that down. There's an example of a split right there. We'll file that down, uh, grind it off and smooth it, and then put the finishing touches on it. So uh, let's get started and hope that this minimal expansion foam is as minimal as they say it is. Okay, so my minimal expansion foam has done its job. Um, it didn't distort the piece at all. Um, it filled all the gaps. I can feel that it gave it a lot more heft. And for any of you that are interested in it, I'm using Red Devil Foam and Fill Gaps and Cracks. Uh, and again, it is minimal expansion, and that is the key to this, is you've got to make absolutely sure. Now I've got to come in here and remove the excess, and I use something a very special. It is a flexible knife. And the reason why it has to be flexible is you want to follow the contour of the original piece. You don't want to go in there and cut away the original, the original piece. So I use a flexible knife. Uh, what I'll do is I'll scrape off. And you know, yesterday I made a big mistake, and I can't believe I did this. Um, when you have overflow, which you expect, and that's, that's what you want. Hang on, let me get up here. Hold on tired of squatting down. Okay, when you have overflow, I, I often wiped it off and that's a mistake because if you leave it, then it's a much easier cleanup job. You just cut away the excess. When you take your hand and wipe along the edge, you smear it all the way down the piece, which means now I have to go back and peel away every single little piece of that stuff. So that was a big mistake. I haven't done this in a while and I thought about it this morning at about three o'clock when I woke up and went, I got four times more work today now than I had before. Had I just left the overflow sticking out, 
I simply could have sawed it off and that would have been that, but instead I'm stuck now having to do a lot of excess work. So anyway, what I'll do today is now cut away this excess foam. I'm very happy with the outcome. I feel it's got a lot more stability to the piece. And once I get that uh, cut away, I'm gonna then grind down the edges one more time with a Dremel tool to make sure it's nice and smooth. Then I'll paint it, and then the final step is going to be to apply a sealer to the entire piece to give it that final, uh, that final stability that I need to be able to move this from location to location. It's not the final step. The final step is getting somebody to build a stand. I don't have the, the ability to do that, so I'm gonna have to hire a friend to build me a stand. So it's another story for another time.
right, so we finished all the steps. Uh, we're to the last one now with these Irish elk antlers, the Megalocerus antlers. Now uh, I'm going to put on a product called Epsilon. It's made by a company called Smoothon. It is an impact resistant foam coating and it works really, really well. I've used it on a number of pieces. Basically, it forms a protective shell over the piece and gives it the real stability we need to be able to take it on the road because again, these antlers are traveling with our traveling museum and so they have to put up with a little bit of abuse. So uh, fortunately for me, this stuff is not affected by humidity or moisture and today it is incredibly hot and uh, been raining on and off all day. So fortunately, I can still go ahead and apply this stuff. It's done by weight. It's a two-part uh, two system. Uh, you add uh, some of, of part A, some of part B, mix them together, and you've got a little bit of time to put them on. So because it's so much area, I'm gonna use a roller. Normally, I prefer to use a brush, and I'll use a brush on the small areas, but, but I'll put it on with a roller to cover as much area as I can. Then it takes about an hour for that to dry, and then you put on a second coat, and two coats is all it really takes. So anyway, gonna get started. I'm looking forward to finally finishing this. Next uh, and final step, truly, is taking it to a, uh, a welder and have a stand built. So uh, anyway, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so here is the finished product. Uh, the guy who did the welding went ahead and made a stand for the Irish elk. It's completely prepped. It looks great. It's sitting in our exhibit right now, and it really looks good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope, uh, I hope you learned a little bit about some of the things that go into it. Uh, what I'll do real quick is I'll give you a shot of our traveling museum if you've never had a chance to see it. I'll, I'll give you a quick shot of it. But anyway, thanks for watching, and again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank <music> you.